President Eisenhower was struggling to find the fastest way to put a satellite into orbit. In an effort to help, scientifically oriented boys joined rocket clubs. To restore American prestige, they would build and launch homemade rockets. More and more teenagers are passing up rock and roll for a rocket roll. Sister Dunn Scotus, a physics teacher, supervises members of the Austin, Minnesota Rocket Society attempting to send a mouse along. We wanted our country to catch up uh, with the Russians and then we wanted to just keep on going forever. We just felt like someday what we were doing was going to help the United States to, to be number one in space. I was just completely uh, fascinated and was doing my best to get rockets as high as I possibly could. My goal was to get a rocket into the stratosphere if I could. I was inspired by Sputnik to build my own rockets. You know, so that uh, ended up with some chemistry experiments in the basement that went wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I exploded this rocket mixture and I burned my eyebrows off and my mother was horrified. They really weren't rockets, they were pipe bombs with fins. It's amazing I didn't uh, kill myself. Uh, they were very, very dangerous. Two of my Nobel friends have fingers missing from, so I, I've got all 10 of them, so I was very careful. Fire! of great things to come from future partners of space. Cape Canaveral, Florida, where America's satellite launching vehicle is the focus, the first U.S. rocket with satellite ever fired. Newsmen from all over the world were flown down for the big turkey shoot. At the launching site, they were given a play-by-play -play account. They witnessed each tiny detail of the usually top-secret preparation. It was carnival time at Cape Canaveral. All through the day and night, thousands of people thronged the nearby beaches and jetties, waiting eagerly for the big moment. This is Charles Von Friend reporting from Cape Canaveral. Reporters and photographers have gathered here throughout the night and early morning. Now it is almost noon. We expect the Project Vanguard missile carrying the first United States Earth satellite to be launched momentarily. Inside the blockhouse, the tension steadily mounted. Minus 10, 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Vanguard started sounding like the moan of some massive dinosaur. Fire filled its nozzles. It spit flame at first, then built with great crescendo to a tremendous howl. It ripped itself loose from its chains and began to rise slowly. We all rose with it. Oh, God, no! Somebody screamed. I don't see it. I think the launching has been unsuccessful. It seemed as if the gates of hell had it's opened. A huge black cloud of smoke. Before our unbelieving eyes, the giant began to topple. No trace of the missile. There's a sigh of disappointment through the crowd of observers. It took just seven seconds to set back a nation's pride. But our first attempt to launch an Earth satellite has apparently ended in failure. Most of the payload is down here in this gully. You'll find other bits and pieces of it scattered out here in the smoking debris on the other side of the road. Normally, after a launch, that launching pad is as clean as a dinner plate, and you can see what it looks like now. Good evening, everybody. Coast to Coast, Douglas Edwards reporting. At Cape Canaveral, a dull thud heard round the world.
The London Daily Express called it Kaputnik. The Daily Mail, Footnik goes the U.S. satellite. The Sun, Stay Putnik. The Daily Herald, Oh, what a flopnik. This headline was proudly reprinted by the Soviets. It went on and on.